In this video, we're going to use a feature uh, called a one variable data table. So again, we're going to be using up in our data menu the what if analysis, but this time we're going to uh, use a data table. So let's start by looking at the information on the spreadsheet that we have open here. So we're looking at a spreadsheet that contains information on um, the items that go into the production of containers. In this case, it's e-container. It's a bulk cargo box. So all of these things added together gives me a total cost of 1.6 million. So it costs that much to produce 500,000 units. So if I click down in the cost per unit, I will see that I have taken B10 divided by I'm sorry, B8 divided by B10. So I've taken the total cost divided by the number of units in our standard production. And so then my standard cost per unit is $3.21. All right. So I want to use this uh, one variable data table feature up here. I want to use it to figure out, OK, so how is that cost per unit going to change depending on how many units I make? So what if I have some labor issues and I can't produce 500,000? How is that going to drive up the cost per unit? What if I make 575 instead? What's the cost per unit going to be then? And then I can start to make some business decisions uh, so that I can compete with the competition that are selling the same kind of boxes. So that's what we're going to use this one variable data table for um, so that we can at a glance see what those different numbers are and we can start making some decisions. So in order to use the one data variable table um, or the one variable data table, um, Excel needs us to start in the row above and one to the right of where our different variables are located. And for us, they're located right here in E6 to E12. So that means that I need to start one row above and to the right. So I need to start over here in F5. So um, Excel needs to know what's the formula going to be to figure out all of those variables um, for the cost per unit. So the formula we know already exists over in B12. So I'm going to link those two together by typing my equal sign. And I'm just going to type in B12. And, when I, and notice right away that Excel links the two. It, it highlights the cell. I'm going to press Enter. And so 321 drops in because it's exactly the same as what's in uh, cell B12, right? So now I'm going to select from E5 all the way down to F12. And I'm going to use the data table uh, feature uh, so that I can create a, a one variable data table. So this, there's only one variable, and it's the number of units. So I want Excel to drop down all the different numbers just using this one feature. So I'll go to the what if analysis. I'm going to choose data table. So the column input cell that um, that we want to um, that we want to type in is B10 because that's the variable that's going to change, right? So our standard production is 500 units, but what happens if instead we've got all of those? So let's click OK, and automatically Excel drops down the different um, total cost per unit. So let's click on one, and notice that Excel puts in a formula in each of these cells right? that says it's, it's producing a table based on B10. It knows that instead of B10, it's going to use these because those were the cells that were highlighted when we dropped in the, the uh, formula using the feature. So Excel knew that we wanted a table, and we wanted the uh, standard production units to change each time, and we wanted Excel to give us the new cost per unit for each of those.
And so now at a glance, I can look at that and go, well, you know, if we could bump our production up to 575000 then we could produce them for $2.79. Maybe we can sell them for $4 and sell them cheaper than our competition can and still make a good profit. So it's, it's a helpful tool. The what-if analysis is a helpful tool to, um, to help us... Um, make business decisions. And so that's how you use the data table in the what if analysis to create a one variable data table. In our next video we're going to learn how to do the same thing but we're going to use two different uh, variables and that's what we'll do next.